present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, we are here, and um, happy 2015 to all our viewers. Uh, it is uh, the post-holiday show, you know, after the, the insane pagan Christmas, Saturnalia and Brumalia and uh, course New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, and uh, hopefully all of our viewers are safe and didn't do anything stupid for New Year's Eve, but it is 2015, it, 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 life is back to normal, the major holidays are over, thank God, and it is uh, January, uh, which means we <laughs> have officially begun the, uh, the unofficial uh, beginning of Old Man Winter, January and February. Whoa. It begins in January, and yes, it is uh, lightly snowing out, but it will, the good thing is it will turn to sleet and rain, because the temperature, you say, will go up, right? Yes. Excuse me. I forgot my Jesse the Body Ventura boa. All right. Looks good against the burgundy red, huh? Speaking of, you know, contrast coloration. Uh, I still have to get a, a sack of low-grade sunflower seeds for the pair of cardinals in my yard. Believe it or not, they haven't flown south. Something's going on, man. We, me and uh, my partner here, we were talking about, you know, there's the slow shifting of the poles or global warming, but something is messing up the navigational system in the minds of uh, our uh, wildlife here. Um, but um, at least we're here. And at least all that crap and all that hectic uh, uh, stress and uh, the nauseating music and commercials are over. Are and, over. And the assault. What? And the assault on our wallets. Yeah, the, the, uh, the, well, yes, the assault on our wallets, uh, when it's St. Valentine's Day, I usually say the St. Valentine's Day massacre on our wallets, but that is in February. And I think February 14th, right? And that's because there's a bow and arrow used. So it's a massacre rather than a Well, uh, the retail industry, once again, uh, uses uh, uh, feelings of guilt and emotion to uh, dupe all you men out there into uh, paying ridiculously high prices to get laid for um, chocolates and, 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 and roses at the florist and uh, greeting cards. You know, um, because the women have been brainwashed to believe that this is what you do. Somebody they decided to make a sort of a holiday out of it. Not that uh, the United States government really cares about the original Saint Valentine's over at. Uh, I guess he was. Vatican or something, but nobody cares about this. Just like, you know, with Easter and Christmas, they have nothing to do with Jesus or God. They just happen to be pagan. And it's a game. It's a retail uh, uh, brainwashing to uh, lay a guilt trip on people and make them feel that they have to comply. They have to buy the gifts. They have to uh, do it without complaining and they have to pay the high prices because in the United States with crony capitalism the retail industry they also like to price gouge just like all other businesses uh, gasoline you know you name it they all use the price gouge 
to uh, pretty much, uh, they got you by the short hairs mm -hmm. of your kuyums, of your balls. And uh, people are lemmings in America. People that are not independent, free thinkers with open minds easily get suckered. And this is what happens. Uh, let me get the formalities over with. Welcome to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. And I am here with the one and only, my illustrious co host and mentor, and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. The Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, how are you feeling this first January week, sir? 2015. Didn't get much sleep last night. What? Did not get much sleep last night. Neither did I. I. I had to take a chill pill, a natural chill pill, which consists of uh, valerian root, chamomile, and melatonin. Did it knock you out? It, 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 it did eventually, but I was... Because uh, I didn't get to sleep till after crap. 6 o'clock. No, your insomnia was much worse than it's mine. It's not insomnia. It's cats. You mean to tell me your cats, which are, I guess, is supposed to be nocturnal animals, even though they, they're up in the supposed daytime. They want, they want to come in and out? Yeah. In the middle of the night? So, they went out. And I waited, two of them went out. I was waiting to, till after three o'clock. See, this is the problem, man. You were and waiting. And then I for shut them. the door. You, they got you and by, went to by the nose. Eye. They got you by the nose, man. Just like a, a chick would. They got you by the nose. Well, they're supposed to come back. Uh, you know what? If but they, sometimes they don't. If they, uh, this, if they interrupt with your yeah. much needed sleep, and they demand to go out. Well, guess what? They're just going to have to go no, find they were a out. They're going to have to go out and then find a crevice somewhere and wait until you get up or 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 your uh, staff gets up and yeah. lets them back in. That's what happened because it was after three o'clock, and I wanted to go to Betty by. Don't you don't? So they waited out there. There's no way I'm going to stay up. You know, and lose sleep to wait for them to come back. They're they're outdoor cats. They uh, they take a crap and piss outside, because we really he really doesn't have the room nor the time to be maintaining that many litter boxes. <gasps> so they go outside anyway. Aside from the cats, Otherwise. people are not watching uncensored, hard hitting truth to hear Why about not? cats, because it it's not befitting. What the, is the biggest? Uh, it is video. not befitting of the na of the title of the show. What is the biggest video attractions on on Facebook? For idiots and on the internet. For idiots, kittens, cats. For idiots. Yeah. But are these people um, uh, independent free thinkers with open minds that want to hear the real hard hitting truth? I take. It. I say not. Uh, I don't go up to cute pictures and go. Oh, I just gotta have. I just have to post that on my page. Well, you know these uh, independent. We have a reputation to Free here. thinkers are hard to come by. Well, that's Wherever why we're here. Are. Wherever they are, that's the purpose of you know? your newsletter and the purpose of this show is to get tough, to play hardball, and to tell the real hard-hitting truth, not to go. A uh, little oh, what an adorable little kitten! Oh, look look at that little duck. He's he's sleeping with the cat. Oh, let's uh, talk about it on the air with all of our listeners. Come on. Well, that's how you get people morons. To you. Yeah, but these people don't want to hear. You don't know the that. truth. They get offended easily. Maybe the ones Maybe that not. the ones that are into small talk when they go online. And into cutie pie photos. Well, that's different. They get very offended that's and different. flustered when when you hit when you hit them with real, real uh, uh, controversial subjects. That's all true, but how do you get a person to you to hear you? You must have something to attract them. Right. It could them. be it could be your personality. It could be a gimmick. You know, like no, they, to, for they, your personality to work, they have to be there. Right, like for instance, See? 
like for instance, when Jesse Ventura first decided to run for governor of Minnesota, and then later on he decided to go into uh, 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 become a new uh, an underground uh, news personality. He was Jesse the Body Ventura, so he had he had the notoriety, you know, from the pro wrestling world, and he had people that loved him. Then he, in other words, he started off with a base. Yeah, but they all didn't live in Minnesota. Uh, I don't know how many fans in Minnesota he well, had. Well, that's what I'm saying. But he the, had a base. He had a base. He had a base. He had a base. He had a base. You understand what I'm saying? But they all didn't live in Minnesota. It, it, to, for him to become governor of Minnesota, Minnesota people had to vote for him. Well, he had to attract Minnesota right. voters. But he was on the W. He was a WWE superstar, so yeah. he had the base. But there are fifty states that did, watch did, WWE. I can't believe he's defending all these moronic cutie pie photos online. I can't believe it. Your space is the man, our mentor. The tough you are Reverend not Dr. Bill with the newsletter. He's a, I look, I love animals too. When but I don't, I'm not going to spend all God, the whole goddamn show uh, uh, talking about cute animals when you, photographs. That's not what I said. Yeah. You, do, you constantly do this. You don't get the idea. No, I don't. If you have a product to sell, you have to get people to see the product. How do you do that? When Ed Schultz has a show. Ed Schultz, forget about it. MSNBC is not seen by a lot of people. And Ed Schultz is on at 5 o'clock where he don't have a big audience at all. Well, does John Stewart or Stephen John Colbert Stewart has 1 million vote talk, uh, 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 talk about cute this kittens viewers. and ducks? Photographs posted online. Do they talk about nonsense like that? I don't think so. They talk about what will draw the viewer. Well, they have a they have a theme. They have a they have a format. That's correct. And our format is not oh little cute duck. Look, look at that cat. Oh how adorable. We're cat lovers. Oh we want to we want to we want to attract all the cat lovers in the universe. What did I just say before? It's poor. It's it's. What boring. is the most? What? What is the most looked at stuff on Facebook and the internet? Uh, besides. Stupid idiotic, stupid idiotic video. Stupid idiotic But these people are morons. These are the same ones that, wa that watch reality TV shows. But how can you make that judgment? Because they're that all because cat it, because it, 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 because, are it, because you don't learn anything from it. It's oh, stupid. Yes, you do. What do you learn? How cute an animal is? No, there was a video up there the other night Horseshit. on escape. And it showed all cats and dogs and how they escape from places where people put them. Opening doors, well, that's opening in, gates. Well, that's opening, well, that's of course, interesting. it's interesting. That's my point. You can't dispense with certain things and say morons only look at these things. How do we? How do we start on this cute cat? Oh, we were talking about the cats going in and out of the house. All right. Uh, I just want to seriously, on a serious note, I want to dedicate uh, this week's show, which is the first show of. Uh, 2015. I want to dedicate the show uh, in a memorial and to honor the uh, the liberal lion who passed away recently at I believe age 82. The great uh, former governor of New York State Mario Cuomo died, um, and um, I always liked him a lot. And I just want to send a. Uh, here from newsletter censored and mega life That's 21. because he was a liberal in those days when a liberal was a liberal. Yeah. Mario Cuomo. The lib That's why I say the liberal line. He was for the liberal guy. Yeah, and he and he and he stuck to his he, he, principles. He, his principles, and uh, I, I every time I listened to him speak on a talk show, I was always blown away and very impressed by him. And he was just he was right on the money. But I'm sure when he was governor of New York State. For, for two or three terms, whatever. Three terms. Three terms. I'm sure he bucked heads with a lot of people, uh, just like his son Andrew Cuomo, who's the governor now, probably has uh, gets flack from from you know just like any other uh, progressive. Uh, but but no, Mario Cuomo was a was a liberal when li liberals were really liberals, like mm -hmm. you said. 
Uh, and liberals were progressive. Yes. But of course the right wing demonize the term liberal and therefore they don't call themselves well, he, liberals they, anymore. They, they, lay, they laid a successful guilt trip yeah. on liberals to feel self-conscious about using the word liberal just like they made uh, disabled people feel guilty that they yes. were collecting you can go out and get a job disability checks you know what or I mean? climb a mountain in a wheelchair yeah, who is it? Uh, uh, somebody was telling me, actually the person happens to be a Republican, was telling me about this man that, um, no, no, they're not a Republican, they're, they're I'm trying to remember who it was, they're, uh, well, they're not, let's put it this way, they're not, a, the person was an extreme right wing, but the person was definitely not a progressive liberal, uh -huh. was bragging about how this man who was born with no arms and legs, uh, 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 made a video to show people how he uh, got through life and learned how to do things for himself. So it was kind of a, a disabled man is self-sufficient video, and it's shit like this that make that gives uh, adds fuel to the fire, you know, for Republicans to uh, convince people, ah, you don't need your welfare or your disability check, ah, you're, you're, get out there, like, see that guy that has no arms and no legs, look, look at him, if he could do that, oh, you could do more, blah, 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 the talking points, and it's, it's bad for disabled people. To believe that crap. It's bad, it's crap. But I want to have a, a moment of silence for Mario Cuomo, the great Mario Cuomo. I always liked them a lot. Okay, we're back. Um, let's see. In the news, it's almost like that song from the village people. In the Navy, you will sail the seven seas in the Navy. Okay, I hear that our wonderful, uh, obese, obnoxious uh, gas bag governor, Republican governor of New Jersey, Chris, Krispy Kreme, Crisco Christi, mm -hmm. and it doesn't <clears throat> shock me, it infuriates me, but it doesn't shock me that mm -hmm. he wants to do it. He wants to sell uh, Liberty State Park off. Yes, yes. To the private sector. That's what they want to no, do. No, no more state park. He wants to sell them. Isn't it something Get that... Get rid of the commons. Isn't it something that the Republicans in Washington want to do yes. with, with our national parks? Get rid of the commons. But it's all for the sake of money. Giving it to the bid to, to, to the corporations. So what they want to do private is... Private sector. They want to privatize absolutely That's everything. That's correct. The Republicans. Therefore, you have to pay for it. They're scum. They're scum. And all no free lunch, pal. Also, yeah, except for them, see, uh, oh, that's a, a, okay. a rich Republican can have all the free lunch he wants, that's the perks, the payoffs, right. the, uh, um, the free, the corporate welfare, the subsidies, oh, that's okay. Uh, um, what is that douchebag's name, uh, 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 Peter Brabeck, uh, the uh, Nestle yes, CEO, yes, he, yes. of course he's in the news again saying the same bullshit that people do not have the right, to, right. To, to pure drinking water. And of course, I say the same shit for hundreds of millions of years. Creatures on our planet drank pure water, and now this one man says no. It's not a matter of no. How? It's a matter of he has the money and he wants to buy it up. Yeah, but the the That's colossal it. goal and the ego maniacal, selfish personality to think that you, Peter Brabeck, have the right to sort of play God and take away pure drinking water from all creatures of this planet, including Homo sapiens, human race. I mean, I mean, you got to be a real selfish, ego maniacal prick. Yeah, but like, like the Koch brothers or, or, or Bill Gates. Huh? They can do it. That's the problem. They do it because they can. That's and right. as long as they can, they have not been defined. 
the rich in this country have not been defined. This is why for seventy years or so. Even even though Republicans don't like it, this is why it is crucial to have regulations on the fat cats. Well, the problem is and make them you must have someone in charge. And in a democracy, it is us, the government. Uh, I posted a banner on our uh, Facebook uh, group of a, a large whale. Hold on. A photo of a whale with a little boat, like a dinghy, in, uh, hovering over the whale. And the whale is described as we the people, and the boat is described as the population of politicians that we elect. And it said something like, if only we the people knew the, the the difference in size in comparison between us and them and how much of us are out there and this is and why the power we would have and this is why I, I was so upset when so few people voted this past <laughs> November I mean people don't understand the power they do have and they didn't care it's just apathy they didn't bother to vote at all yeah. And uh, look what happened. Uh, the, the demon, I call them demons, Chris Christie, Scott Walker, whatever, doesn't matter, yada yada. If you're a right wing, you're a demon. And, uh, and that's about it. And people don't have the ability to recognize a fake, phony, fraud liar that has a selfish, greedy agenda. They can't recognize that. And that reminds me of one of the Twilight Zone episodes I saw. I do not know if you ever seen it. It was, uh, there's this man uh, wandering outside in a, in a terrible storm. He was looking for shelter. And then he sees a light and he comes up to this like big castle. Of course, every time there's lightning bolts coming down, there's always a castle. So he comes up to the castle, he bangs on this tremendous door and this uh, old man in a robe with um, a staff, like a, you know the shepherd's staff with the hook, little bow peep uh, cane, a stick. Anyway, in this castle, it, was, it almost looked like a monastery, there, there were all these older men with long beards, long hair and robes carrying the same staff person in charge says we'll give you some shelter we'll give you something to eat but you cannot stay here you must leave mm. and the person begged you know to have him stay and then he said no so what happened was the guy collapsed so he had to stay what happened was he heard the this howling like a werewolf and he wondered what it was he says the old man says don't pay attention to it, ignore it. So the guy became curious, and he went in, in the dungeon area, there was, there was a, 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 a jail cell, and there was a man behind it, but the, the man was like saying that they're keeping him prisoner against his will, please open the door, unlock the... Uh, the devil as an angel of light. Are oh, you a schmuck cookie? Ah. What happened was he, the man in the cell, even after the the leader told him who that was behind the cell, behind the bars, mm -hmm. don't pay attention to what stories he tells you. Don't pay attention to what form he takes. That is Satan, and uh -huh. you, and that is the reason why the problems, the the, the 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 really big problems of the world have stopped. No wars, no this, no that, no pestilence, no uh, hunger, or, or right. all that shit. It all stopped, and you ever wonder why? That's the reason why. I was able to hold captive Satan himself. All right. The, long story short, the guy was so uh, uh, touched and, and, and fooled by the man. Deceived. In, and deceived by the man in the jail cell. You know, he really got to him right here in the heart. All right. He unlocked the cage, and as the man was walking away, the pointy beard, the horns started coming out, the, yeah. the cape with the with the big collars, he started to transform 
and then he disappeared. He went to the window and just disappeared in a, in a, a ball of flames and he made the mistake. He didn't listen to the old man. It really was Satan. And the moral of the story is that um, humanity, uh, being they mentioned uh, Satan coming to people as an angel of light uh, in, 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 in the most pleasing forms Not you can man. imagine. Most pleasing forms. And people have a problem, an ancient problem of not having the ability to to see him, to spot who Satan is. They, have, they do not have the ability to recognize Satan. And that's the problem that happened in the Garden of Eden. When he's fooling you, when he's tricking you. Okay, that's exactly right. That's why God told him, don't touch that tree. Because right. in the day you do, you will die. Because you don't have the abilities to make decisions and choose like I have. Yeah. Rod Sterling was a genius. I mean, he was absolutely... Humble. Yes, he was. Uh, I mean, so many episodes. And, I mean, to come out, to, to create the screenplays for all these episodes, unbelievable, man. Uh, deserves Every Twilight Zone had a moral. Everyone had a moral and a story. Uh, you, you learn something from... Every episode Rod Serling created mm -hmm. in that series, even even Night Gallery afterwards was good. Was good, not as good as Twilight Zone. But yeah, I never kept up with that. You know, Twilight Zone is so popular that young people today, some of them, they'll pick the Twilight Zone marathon over the Honeymooners marathon if it's go if it's going on at the same time. Right. They'll pick the Twilight Zone over everything. You know, that's how great it is. Um, well, it should be required viewing. Very Much like I say about the, the classic movies like Fahrenheit 451, yeah. Brave New World, uh, The Day the Earth Stood Still. You know, all of these should uh, 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 be part Soil of our... Soil and Green. Soil and Green. 1984. 1984. These should be part of our being. Oh, extremely educational TV series. Right. I mean, it's not entertainment. You're, you're, you're learning so much. Right. From it, it should actually, it should actually be college credit to ah. to 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 view a Twilight Zone marathon. Be and, and part to, of a course, and to be tested, required in the humanities. It's just a, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, basic human skills. Um, well, Sarah Palin again is in the news. Uh, yeah. There's a photo and a story of her uh, rather portly six-year-old son named Trigg using the, uh, the family's uh, black Labrador retriever as a stepping stool to be able to reach something on the kitchen counter and Sarah Palin thought it was just so peachy keen and neato. She, 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 she was like proud of the fat Trigg, the, the little Trigg. Maybe he was giving it a Japanese massage. I think he was trying Foot to give. Massage. He must have been trying to give it a uh, chiropractic adjust, just uh, because he stepped go. right yeah. on the spine. Right on the spine, yes. Of the lab, black lab, and of course, multitudes of people are infuriated. Yes, it is animal cruelty. I, I was very um, upset, not only by the photo, but more upset at the adults that allowed the boy to do this. Whoever said that Sarah Palin was an adult? in the first place. Well, apparently she's uh, getting her little son off to a great start, teaching him animal cruelty and uh, not having compassion for, for uh, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna make, he's gonna become a great Republican when he grows well, up. Well, she taught her daughter Bristol to be abstinent, abstinent too, but that didn't work, did it? Of course it's not gonna work. People have hormones, people have hormones, you know, you, uh, like my grandfather used to say, my late grandfather uh, used to say, a stiff prick has no conscience. <laughs> the hormones will win. Forget about it. You can say anything you want and give speeches and say, oh, just say no to sex. Just say no to this. Just say no to that. And how do you make a hormone? How do you make a hormone? You don't pay her. That's right. <laughs>
Or what? It, what is a, a whore with a runny nose? Full. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it was a little gross. It was a joke I posted, a banner I posted. It says, um, there are three things that have no problem in, in winter's cold. Uh, um, it was uh, penguins, I believe it was polar bears, and whores. Oh, and they yeah, showed a they're picture. always wearing short uh, Yeah, they showed a picture of... The legs oh, are always on the Yeah, legs. with like really short mini skirts and, and the snow on the ground. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. What happens in New Year's? All right. Um, I mean, January. At, right after New Year's Day. This is what happens. You get all this crap in the mail from uh, nationally advertised health clubs and gymnasiums. Oh, yeah. Trying to get you to sign up. Okay, this one is Gold's Gym. New Year's resolution. Yeah, keep they, those New Year's resolution. They exploit the fact that uh, people gain some weight for the major holidays between Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's. They know it and they exploit it. And you get bombarded by all this advertisement to join the gym, New Year's resolution. Here's another one. Quest. Quest nice. Gym. All right, here's another one. All right, all kinds of promos. Mm -hmm. And what's this one? Blink is a stupid name for a health club. There's, a, there's one in my town called Blink. Blink and feel good. Why do you, why would anybody of, of gymnasiums want to call it Blink? Blink. Ah. Anyway, this is Blink, and they show everybody on the treadmill. Yeah, you know, they're trying to, you know, they're trying to get you to join. So what I'm trying to say is, um, I, well, I work out at home. I don't need to be part of a crowd to get motivated to exercise. I, I can do just fine by myself. I'm self-motivating. I don't like distractions at all. I'm totally focused alone. And it's a lot cheaper for me to work out at home. But the point I'm getting it is that this is how crony capitalism is in the retail industry. They uh, take a um, they take something that people a dilemma that people have, and in this case, uh, those that gained a lot of weight for the holidays, and uh, they make them feel bad about it, and they they remind them that they're more out of shape than ever before, and they they need to. Uh, start the year off right and join a gym and hand over their their money mm -hmm. uh, because uh, they want to be they should be physically fit uh, come Memorial Day weekend if they decide to put on a swimsuit yeah bikini baby. yeah well they it's just uh, put those on the garbage can when you're done don't throw, throw them inside oh, yeah I was gonna we use them. I don't need them but yeah. if you want them we use the big one for the kitty cat okay no problem. I'll just put them here. Um, but what else is new? We were talking before about how they use the feelings of guilt and emotion, you know, and um, I don't know why concerning these holidays for lovers, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why women have to constantly be reassured in, in, in terms of presence, in terms of gifts. Uh, a, a, a woman should be reassured all the time by the man she's with and, and uh, they should do nice things together. It shouldn't be uh, certain times of the year, just like uh, thinking about Jesus shouldn't be nah. only on around Easter and, and pagan Christmas. And uh, uh, being in shape and eating healthy and exercise should not be always in January, it should be all year round, and uh, you know it's part of the lifestyle, a uh, healthy lifestyle. So, um, well, I could never understand why, or how. Let's say, you exercise, you burn off uh, some calories, and your appetite increases, and you go and eat, and then you gain gain them back again. Well, if you eat so properly, what the hell is that all if about? If you eat properly, you won't gain excess body fat. If you eat, yeah, if but I'm saying when you if you're just if you're just going to exercise, 
and theoretically you burn off 160 calories right. or something. But your like hunger for protein. Then you get hungry, and then you eat, and you gain back the yes. 160 or more calories. Well, it's not it, it, the hunger you're you're referring to is very true, but it's not um, a hunger, uh, a craving for carbohydrates and sugar. It's a it's a craving for protein. Yeah. So if you eat a l high protein, low carb, high fat, very important good fats, it's fine. You will still, you know. But most people who d are exercising, etc., they're going to go right to a carb. Well, they might. They might. They might. They're not going they, they 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 to eat a lamb chop. No, they, they finish their workout. They might uh, do something stupid like uh, go right to McDonald's or Burger King. And, and get an apple pie. Oh, I'm I'm hungry. I'm working out, and they'll go order a value meal, and they'll get all that poison <laughs> and carbs, and uh, 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 you know they deep fry in, in very bad fat, very yeah. bad, not good fat. The whole food is crap. Oh, the the burgers are toxic. Yeah, of Jeez. course. White bread, you know. You hear any more about pink slime? I guess they're back to it again. Uh, once in a while I hear about it and it seems like Jamie Oliver is the um, the spokesperson against Yeah, he won some Pink kind Slime. of a battle. Good for him. Uh, look it up on uh, YouTube. Uh, Pink Slime and ja uh, the uh, Food Channel uh, celebrity chef Jamie Oliver explaining it all to you. Mm. I salute Jamie Oliver. Look it up. I also want to send greetings to my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Amiho. Greetings, Amiho. And greetings. <laughs> I almost popped myself in the nose, man. And greetings to my good friend and former WWE star and wrestling extraordinaire in South Florida, Mr. Ken Thiessen. Greetings to Ken Thiessen and greetings to Eric Doyle and Rick Brown of. Um, Unconventional, the unconventional asylum. Ooh. No more steel, stone, and sugar. They they decided to go sugar free in 2015. So I wish them luck. I will tell you that story uh, off the air. But uh, no, not I won't tell you off the air. But without mentioning names, mm -hmm. uh, what happened was sugar. Sugar was a um, particular female business partner uh -huh. that did that wanted to reap the the rewards of having being self-employed and running a, a business mm -hmm. but did not want to do any work did not want to contribute any in investing her own money or time uh -huh. it, it was very lazy but tried to hog the uh, the bulk of the profits Mm. And uh, Eric Doyle and Rick uh, 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 Rick Brown, they had enough of that. They they've been leaning over, bending over way backwards for a little too long, and they finally wised up. I would have straightened their ass out right from the beginning. All right, but you know they were they I don't know. They just decided enough is enough. It's destroyed or broke the camel's back. But anyway. Um, that and of course all my administrators uh the great mario petrus of petrus fitness uh sash uh, uh boyle and jolton uh joe stebbins i give my greetings to all of you um and that's about it really um oh uh um that's it. Okay, let's sink our teeth into these readings for 2015. I know we were long-winded, but, you know, it's the beginning of the year. The writer reminds us of how dignified and graceful former President George W. Bush has been by keeping silent about the Obama administration. How true, especially when we consider that Bush 
had the wisdom to launch what is perhaps the most unjustifiable and disastrous war sold by lies in American history. Bush and Cheney have way too many skeletons in their closet to be throwing stones at Barack Obama. That's why he's keeping silent. <laughs> yeah, and I don't blame him. He's, <laughs> he's walking on thin ice, so he's... Thousands of Americans died. Tens of thousands of Americans were severely injured. Yeah, Hundreds of thousands. Yeah, that commercial for the wounded warriors with Trey, uh, Trey Atkins, that is heartbreaking, man. It, makes it my may be heartbreaking. My mother but, cries when she sees but it. But guess what? What? It's totally unnecessary. That's why it's so upsetting. The so, private sector or nonprofit sector should not be taking care of our wounded warriors. That's a government responsibility. And that's exactly what goes through my mind when that commercial plays. You should not have to take up charity and a fundraiser to take care of men and women who Put were their lives on the line. permanently disabled or killed, per, per, let's say permanently disabled, for totally unjust wars. Wars for profit. The private sector, I mean, the uh, uh, taking up a collection plate, they should have guaranteed total support and backing by the United States government, including their health care. Of course. Not homeless, not broke, not poor, gotcha. uh, not without health care, health insurance. I'm sorry, go ahead. Hundreds of thousands of Iraqis died and millions were injured or displaced. Our nation also was disgraced by torturers and the entire region is now in turmoil. Only beneficiaries were those cronies who profited from the war. I am thankful for Bush's dignified silence. If he opens his mouth, he'll probably uh, find some way in this country oh, Dick Cheney, to, Dick to, to, uh, to uh, uh, put him in jail. Dick Cheney, Criminals the man with the mechanical heart, doesn't seem to be shy about about blabbering, opening his mouth. Oh meat. no, no, because well, he has to, he has to defend himself because... Defend? Yes. Defend what? His legacy. His legacy. Of being a demon? Well, that's, you know, how it really is, but he is putting a, a different wallpaper on it. Does his mouth naturally... Uh, hold on. Go like that? Wait. Does, does Dick Cheney's mouth naturally go crooked all the time? Yeah, like that. It's like Popeye. He makes these Popeye faces. But that's that. That's that's a that's a uh, scowl. That's a uh, uh, what the hell am I looking for here? I mean that's a that's a devil grin. <laughs> you know that's what that is. That's not a Popeye. It's like a, it's like a sneer, a devilish yes, sneer. Yes, yes. Not a grimace, but a sneer. He sneers at all of us. Okay. I got rich on that stinking war, you idiots. He has contempt for... Contempt uh, for us all. Yes. He's uh, a sociopath. No kidding. No kidding. It seems to be common with right-wing people. What does the color of the yolk of the egg indicate about the nutrition of the egg? Um, the color of the yolk, maybe it might indicate freshness, perhaps? Answer. Nothing. Oh, it's like, it's like the same as a brown egg, a brown shell egg versus a white shell egg. The Nothing. color, the color of the yolks comes from substances called carotenoids. Uh -huh. And yeah, we're not yoking around about this. Right? No, no. 
No yolk. And they depend on the diet of the hen. Oh, wow. Brighter yolks have no more nutrients, nor indicate more nutrition in the egg whites, than paler yolks. It just determines the diet of the, of the hen. But consumers love colorful yolks. Of course, they like shiny waxed apples too. So egg farmers make sure to give their hens plenty of yellow, orange, pigmented plants. Such as marigold petals. Very rich source of lutein and xanthan. And add supplemental carotenoids to their feed. Because the customers want a pretty egg when they break it open. Yeah, I know. A colorless diet of say white cornmeal produces a lighter yolk. And by the way, brown eggs are no more nutritious than white eggs. So either way, you will be in ecstasy. Exactly. Okay, a small one here for the time yes. remaining. Yes, before lunch. The way I understand Noah Smith's column, is that I have to convince him why the cutting up of the economic pie here in America should include an appropriate piece for the labor force. For a retired member of the private manufacturing workforce and reaching the bottom of the middle class, it's very difficult to understand what makes today's economy really work. Uh -huh. First, the economists are no help. They cannot agree on anything about what makes the economy grow or fall. And they never have, they never seem to point the blame at any political group. They like to, they seem to stay very neutral. You know, they don't want to offend anybody, which is really part of the problem because there are culprits that cause all this. You know? But it's, no, it's government interference in the free market that causes all these problems. They always, they're quick to blame big government. Even libertarians blame big government. That's true. They blame the same circumstances as the stock market goes up or down. Now, since China manufactures almost everything cheaper, America gave up producing goods and stop measuring the health of the economy in the gross national product. The economists declared America is now in a service economy and measured the health of America by how much the stores sell. It is very clear to me that the more the consumer buys, the more the service economy grows. Well, in order for the consumer to do this, the consumer must have surplus cash to in their pocket to put back into the economy. If they're just working to barely pay their bills, there there is no money going back into the economy. But think about who the mass consumers are. So it is not being a philanthropist or having a soft spot for the labor force. It is about understanding the flow of money in America and that the venture capitalists managing the money should leave a fair and a good portion of the profit to the working masses. That would permanently enlarge the paycheck of the workforce and secure a stable and strong service economy. Okay. But oh. that would be less for profits! And the big oh. boys and girls! Oh, poor the things. The elites! Poor things. Uh, uh, it reminds me of this uh, posting of an American Indian, a Native American, saying that, you know, after the last fish is caught and the, the last creek is poisoned, and, the, you know, talking about the environment uh, okay. being becoming toxic and unusable, then people will realize that you cannot eat money 
as food. I don't know about that. When what, we have nothing left. What, what was that island? Was that an Easter Island or Madagascar? I think it was Easter Island where they, they used up all the trees. Easter Island. Easter Island. So they didn't realize it. You know? I don't know what happened to them. Uh, that's a mystery. And, and, how, and how they're able to erect figurines that weigh many tons and you know and, and same thing with pyramid building and I mean there, there must have been a an extraterrestrial sor uh, source of technology that helped them build it because there's no way if there were extraterrestrial sources where are they now well they're, they're, they're and why would they're, they help they're taking a low profile don't you think they too would have the prime directive not to interfere? Well, you tell me how they, they took up each stone that weighs a few tons and stacked it high. Time. What? Time. It took a long time to do it. They had to bring all that crap from the quarries. They had a... Uh, chisel it or whatever, you know, yeah. and then stand it up. I mean, the stones, like in the ruins in Bolivia, it's so perfect that you can't fit a razor blade in between the two stones. Well, like I said, they had the time to do these things. You don't have the time to do these things. Today. But the point is, even more, uh, uh, is why did they do all that work for all of that time? put these statues up. Wow. What, to honor some pharaoh? To honor some king? I mean, what is or the purpose? Or to frighten people who are coming on the beach? Ah! Oh, well, I'm these, so scared of that the, statue! The, many of these pyramids seem to be tombs. Tombs for honoring uh, the elitist at the time, which is the, I guess, the royal family of the... Of course civilization and uh, it's 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 like uh, it's like the ultimate ass kissing it's like what they do with the royal family in, in, in England some somebody got offended uh, because uh, we were uh, so, when when the um, when two members of the royal family recently visited the United States Prince uh, William and Princess uh, uh, yeah uh, uh, okay. some famous American, uh, I forgot who it was, did not use proper etiquette when, it was LeBron when, me James. when meeting royalty. First of all, LeBron James, is he an American? I would hope so. Yes, right? He why, put his arm around her. Why should, why should an American who's not British uh, follow customs that that kiss royal ass. Why should they follow customs? Who are these people to Americans? Why, are these people better than us? Why should uh, these uh, news, female news reporters care so much about them? Don the uh, Muslim uh, garb when they're in those countries interviewing. Okay? Yeah. They do that. True. That's true. They're appeasing them. They're appeasing them, but, well, but, they but, think they're honoring. but if the royal family visits the United States, there's no way in hell I'm going to bow down to somebody else's royal subject in America. They can get offended all they want. They're it's, nothing to me. It's just one way of saying you're better than I am. Right. That's all. They're, 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 um, they're the greatest welfare cheats that ever lived. Moochers. Kings well, have always been that. Royalty, they appropriated royalty. everything. Everything was there. Hey, after what the royal family did to the Irish, put the Irish through, I, I don't bow down to none of them. The divine no. right of kings. And the, their own people, you know? I mean, okay. you couldn't, you, you, you had a, in the Middle Ages, like, let's take the Irish, they can only produce their own food on, on their little bit of land. They could not farm 
They it, it all belonged to the King of England. They could not even commercial fish or have cattle. Everything belonged to the king. They had to give part a portion of that food and yeah. stuff they raised if, to the if, king. If you hunt deer in the forest, it was the deer, That's the, the right. king's deer, and the king's forest. That's right. Then the king wanted taxes from everybody. That's correct. Talk about oppression. Never the taxes from the rich, my friend. Isn't it? Always from the poor. Doesn't it sound so similar? Of course. Nothing and is the only new. jobs they created was in the armies. Nothing is new under the sun. And the armies fought to sustain those elites. So the uh, corporate oligarch of today and or plutocracy is very very similar to the imperialism of the past with the uh the, the feudal was it the feudal system yes of course <clears throat> yeah. yeah okay we're gonna go on break it's time for lunch i i will uh we will be joined right now by our uh commercial voiceover artist william h moore the third with his words of wisdom and promo and we'll be back yeah. For the balance it's of a threat, yeah, it's a threat. <laughs> so we'll be back for the balance of the uh, first show for 2015. You know, I remember like it was yesterday. It probably was that um, you know, I calculated that I would be like a little over 40 years old. Ugh. At uh, like like in other words, the year 2000 was a big deal. Mm -hmm when I was in high school uh -huh. and and I was we we were just me and folks relatives we were talking about it's like wow wow we're gonna we're gonna be like middle uh, I'm gonna be middle-aged oh, by the year 2000 it was it was such a futuristic concept yeah at the time back in the 80s right exactly all right we'll see you hi I'm William Morrow wake up people because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living in the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay. We're back. We're back. Thank you very much, William H. Moore the Third, for your words of wisdom and promo. And, uh... We will sink our teeth into these readings for the balance of our first show for the new year 2015. Uncensored hard hitting truth. For years, the government has been issuing guidelines about healthy eating choices. Now, a panel that advises the Agricultural Department is ready to recommend that Americans be told not only what foods are better for their health, but for the environment as well. I'm that means yeah. that when the latest version of the government's dietary guidelines comes out, it may push even harder than it has in recent years for people to choose more fruits, vegetables, nuts, whole grains, and other plant-based foods plant. at the expense of meat. Well, if you know how to blend your your plant source foods properly, 
you can do quite fine on a vegan diet, but you have better know how to blend and combine. The beef and agricultural industries are crying foul. What about the poultry industry? Are they crying foul? <laughs> <laughs> You know, but, but what I mean is uh, you need to supplement to get your B12 for same, vegans. You know, same. Like, like especially the spirulina is an excellent source. I, I was playing with Steve the Cat. Now I'm letting Steve the Cat out. Saying an environmental agenda oh, has no there. place in what has always been a practical blueprint uh -huh. for a healthy lifestyle. Right on, brother. The advisory panel has been discussing the idea of sustainability in public meetings, indicating that its recommendations expected early this year may address the environment. A draft recommendation circulated last month said, a sustainable diet helps ensure food access for both the current population and future generations. A dietary pattern higher in plant-based foods, lower in animal-based foods, is more health-promoting and is associated with lesser environmental impact than is the current average U.S. diet. That appears to take at least partial aim at the beef industry. A study by the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences last year said raising beef for the American dinner table is more harmful to the environment than other meat industries such as pork and chicken. Why is it, does that have something to do with uh, beef that are not free-range grass-fed like Argentina does? I mean, beef that are, uh, that are fed grains. The study said that compared to other popular animal proteins, beef produces more heat-trapping gases per calorie. Oh, yeah, more than pork? Puts out more water-polluting nitrogen. That's in their poo poo. Yeah, well, I, well, I hear, I hear um, pigs defecate. A lot of poo-poo there too. Very high volume. But the cow dung like in India near the Ganges River, Varanasi, India, they use cow dung to make bricks for their homes because the cow dung contains a lot of uh, fiber from the plants they eat. Very durable and they dry it out in the sun. It also takes more water for irrigation and uses more land. True, true. As the advisory committee has discussed the idea, doctors and academics on the panel have framed sustainability in terms of conserving food resources and what are the healthiest of foods. Yeah. There is compatibility and overlap. Chickens are easy. Between what's good for health and good for the environment. <laughs> Once the recommendations are made, the Agricultural and Health and Human Services Departments will craft the final dietary guidelines expected about a year from now. The guidelines published every five years are the basis for USDA's My Plate icon that replaced the well-known food pyramid in 2010 and is designed to help Americans with healthy eating. Guidelines also will be integrated into school lunch meal patterns and other federal eating programs. The meat industry has fought for years to ensure that the dietary guidelines do not call for eating less meat. The guidelines now recommend eating lean meat instead of reducing meat altogether. But another draft discussed at the panel's December the 15th meeting says a healthy diet pattern includes fewer red 
and processed meat. In response, the National Cattlemen's Beef Association sent out a statement by doctor and cattle producer Richard Thorpe calling the committee biased and the meat recommendation absurd. He said lean beef has a role in healthy diets. Objections are coming from Congress too. A massive year-end spending bill enacted last month noted the advisory committee's interest in the environment and directed Agricultural Secretary Dom, Tom Vilsack to only include nutrition and dietary information, not extraneous factors, in the final guidelines. Congress often uses such non-binding directions to put a department on notice that lawmakers will push back if the executive branch moves forward. Environmentalists are pushing the committee and the government to go the route being considered. We need to make sure our diets are in alignment with our natural resources and the need to reduce climate change. Michael Jacobson of the Center for Science and the Public Interest said the idea of broader guidelines isn't unprecedented. They've all, they have already been shaped to address physical activity and food safety. You don't want to recommend a diet that is going to poison the planet. Mm. Oh yeah, big producers though. They don't care if they poison the planet. Yeah. Uh, big agra. As long as it makes a buck. Just like, just like big oil. They don't care. They don't care if they poison the planet. Profit is the only thing they care about. That's it. I wasn't aware. Uh huh that there is a constitutional prohibition about favoring one religion over another, as the letter writer suggests. Perhaps he was referring to separation of church and state. I suggest that he take a closer look at every store, every office, even government offices, even our public schools, as being replete with Christmas symbols. No, no religion can be proven, therefore no religion should ever get involved, get involved with politics, nor should one penny of taxpayers' um, uh, contribution should go to any religion. He should also listen carefully to broadcast songs and commercials and reread those media features to which he refers. If he did, he would find that there are very, very few instances in which a genuine Christian religious symbol appears or is even mentioned. Snowmen, icicles, green wreaths, holly and bows, colored lights, nutcrackers and the like are secular symbols of the holiday. Say that again. Nutcrackers. All of those I just mentioned are secular symbols of the holiday. Oh. They have nothing to do with the birth of Christ. Absolutely nothing. Jesus did not tell anybody to, to celebrate a birthday regardless, let alone his. And he was not born in December. Listen to the end of that sentence. Yeah. The true meaning. Christmas. Right. The true meaning of Christmas uh, uh, is a Christian mean, meaning. The All birth of, it. of Christ, he says, is the true meaning of Christmas. Whenever he was born, which has was nothing not... nothing to do with Christmas. Yeah, it was not December and has nothing to do with buying presents. Maybe they, uh, they took the... Uh, 
the three wise men, which the Spanish call Three Kings Day, which is in January. Maybe they took that uh, event and uh, converted it into uh, giving presents on Christmas and with the Santa Claus nonsense. Maybe that came from the three wise men bringing gifts to the baby uh, for the baby Jesus. Who yeah, knows? but they came. They came. Oh man! They came after he was born. Yes, they came after he was born. Yeah, they were a little late. You know, but but uh, it was not born on the 25th of December. That is, on Christmas. So Christ was never in Christmas. And he never asked to be put in Christmas. But no. this guy put him in Christmas. He called it the true meaning. The guy's a moron. Yeah. He's a lemming. He's a, he's a brainwashed lemming. Yeah, well, this is what happens, you see, when somebody yeah. has half the truth. See? Yeah, I played with the cat. The cat was very affectionate and friendly, but now I'm, I'm, I'm rubbing my eyes. Oh, my God! Anyway, uh, yes, the, I, uh, I dig where you're coming from, brother, with the article. Frankly, I am offended when I see such secular symbols on the municipal green in Teaneck, New Jersey alongside a large menorah, an obvious religious symbol of the Jewish faith. Isn't that a blatant example of favoring one religion over another? People, people should just practice what they believe in and keep it to themselves and nobody, no religion or belief should be favored publicly. But they have to proselytize and convert. But their religion cannot be proven. They still have to do it because the more the more converts they have, the more proof they have that they're doing something right. Huh? Yeah. Doing something right yeah. by proselytizing based on what? That they believe that their God is the real God. Their beliefs are true when it cannot be proven. Well, let's put it this way. Supposing you were in a nation, an uh, environment, where only you have been privy to a truth. And you try to get it out there to others. And they call you nuts or crazy or whatever. So the more people that they have against you proves that they are right and you are wrong. But because you're only a little minority. But any belief that cannot be proven without you know without evidence is all equally nuts. But the evidence that we have used throughout history has been might makes right. It's like a bully, right? That's correct. So it's it's it's, it's a bully. Yeah. Um, we have the might. So what we say goes, and we are right, and you're wrong because and we were right to history. You're just just a few people, and you're you're puny, and we're powerful. Exactly. It's 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 being a bully, basically. You know, it's like it's the way uh, like Chris Christie at a town meeting. Town meetings are supposed to be an uh, open exchange of questions, right, and opinions, mm -hmm. questions and answers, Q&A. But if you disagree with Chris Christie, he tells you to shut up. Then sit down and shut up. Or I'll have you removed. Ooh. Sit down and shut up, right. <laughs> oh, man. A most important thing to remember, huh? is that Christmas is a national holiday. Who cares? The Christmas tree, Ugh. which most government offices display, should not be mistaken for a Christian symbol, such as a crèche, which is displayed mostly on private property. And I, now I hear Jesus was not born in a manger amongst barnyard animals. They just did that. Make it look good. 
But I do agree with the writer about the start of the season. When I was a child, the usual start was the day after Thanksgiving. Now greed has taken over. Oh yeah, the holidays are promoted months ahead of time. Everything is in advance for the retail industry. This national holiday is meant as a time of peace and goodwill to all. Right, spirit of giving, so on and so forth, which are nice. Something the writer should appreciate and promote. Well, I noticed that the mainstream local media does an awful lot of promoting of the, uh, the retail uh, end of the national holiday. They, they, do, they that, do it with a big smile on their face. I wonder if that has anything to do with the fact that they get paid for commercials. They have a big smile on their face when they promote pagan Christmas in, in terms of retail. A huge smile. And even though it's a bunch of bullshit, it's not ethical, they do it anyway. But do I hear anybody in the mainstream media mention all this truth? No. Why, then you are conducting a war on Christmas, according to Mr. Bill O'Reilly. Conducting a war on the pagan lies of the of uh, of Christmas. I mean, I mean, conducting war on the uh, on the lies that the media tells when they promote Christmas for profit. Yeah, it's a war against their exploitation. Profiting off of uh, the birth of Jesus, which I say again, was not in December. <coughs> <coughs> A little lighter moment here. Oh boy. My boyfriend and I have been together for almost four years. Okay. I have given up a job opportunities and graduate school opportunities to move around the country for him and his job. We are currently living in a small town in Texas with our two-year-old son. He promises me we will get married one day. Yeah, women are very, very fixated on that piece of paper, the marriage certificate. But not anytime soon. No, it's, it's, it's... When I tell him I want marriage, he says I'm pressuring him. I wonder if this married this man was married before. Usually people that are married before and divorced are not that enthusiastic about remarrying. I have tried to compromise and ask him to at least make me feel like I'm his partner. Yeah. Does he does he have big bucks? Maybe she wants to marry him for financial reasons. By combining even a portion of our finances to cover mutual costs. Like home and groceries, child care, etc. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh what a what a what an exciting he says fun no. life. He says no. I don't blame him. He won't even tell me his salary. Aha! Uh -huh. And I never read this reading. Or wasn't I? Didn't I hit the nail on the head? It's none of her damn business. She's very preoccupied with this man's uh, income, isn't she? His parents had a nasty divorce, and I can't help but think that this has influenced him 
and his ability to commit. Oh, he, he could probably commit. It's just that her obsession with his income and him sending money her way, that might be a red flag for him. I love him. Yes, yeah, sure. And I know he loves me. Right. I don't want to raise our son apart. But I know I'll never be fully happy until we get married. Sure. When I try to talk to him about my concerns, it always turns into a huge fight. Do I stay or do I leave? Was there a rock, uh, a rock song, Do I Stay or Do I Go? You know what? Go! Leave! Because it's nobody's business how much a person makes uh, or has in the bank. I say this for a man as, or for a woman, either or. It's very rude. None of your damn business. Here's Amy Dickinson's answer. I almost never respond with an instant reaction that someone should leave a relationship. Certainly with a toddler in the picture, but I am making an exception here. Your guy is controlling and withholding. Huh? You are responsible for your choice to give up opportunities and your education in order to follow him around. You have a child with him and to exist in a relationship limbo that you claim is 100% not what you want. Please! Don't make your life worse by doubling down and insisting on marrying him. Never give up your dreams. Never give up your power in a truly loving relationship. Both partners share their dreams and balance their power. Doesn't sound like much real love is here. It's, it's, it's this man is showing you who exactly he is. Wow. Believe him. You need to call a friend or a family member. Uh. See a lawyer. Start your life anew. She's siding with the woman because she's a female. She's not mentioning the fact that she's si trying to size up this man's income and uh, mentions financial issues, uh, which is a, a, a dead giveaway of her agenda. Amy well, Dickinson is not to. mentioning any of that. She's trying to secure her life. She's been a bon vivant here with him, bouncing around the country, having a child with him. Now you see what happens when you have a kid, well the law automatically uh, feels sorry for the woman and favors the woman. Uh, it used to. The kid is, it's all, it, 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 once a, especially with younger parents, older, older generation parents, they said no, they were not afraid to say no. You know, and uh, no meant no, but today's parents, for some reason, they, they, they make their whole existence revolve around the child. The children are coddled and spoiled, and they're afraid to say no to them, and, you know, everything's about the kid, unfortunately. And, and, and when there's a child, the law goes along with these uh, modern-day moms. No, no. I say uh, she uh, she should not give up her her dreams and her career. Uh, and she don't have one because she has followed him around with his career. She sacrificed right. for him, right. but his reason for not getting getting married may be just as valid uh, as her reason for wanting to get married. You know, I mean, Amy Dickinson did not mention that. That he well, might they have better valid, get together, shouldn't they? That he might have valid reason. And the fact that this woman asked what his income was, I don't like that. I don't like that. 
very intrusive, rude, and it shows that she's a money grubber. <gasps> she's sizing up his income. Maybe she was trying to plan household finances. Maybe. How does she know you, we, they can afford to buy a new car? Maybe. Or down payment maybe, on a house. Maybe this man is used to his freedom to do what he wants and come and go. Ah. And not, and not, but you know what? Not have to compromise with a, a woman in the house that married couples have to do. They have to compromise. Ah. And every time they spend money, they have to compromise. Mm -hmm. The money goes into a joint account. You know, so isn't it funny then that there are certain people in the world who like the benefits of, let's say, marriage and having kids and stuff like that, but don't want to go along with the, uh, like the uh, getting married? Well, it, it, you, it, know? you have to decide. You you know you can't have some you of the. You want the cow for free instead of paying for the milk. You, you can't know? have some of the benefits of a family or a married life and then without the others. It, yeah. it, it goes with the territory. It's a package. You either agree on the package. But you don't want it. The whole package or you don't. You don't want it. Well, then uh, they have to go their separate ways and he would have to pay child support. If mm. this is his son or daughter, he would have to pay child support and they would have to go their separate ways. Because they have uh, well, different desires. At least, at least they have to discuss these things instead of it resulting in a yeah. fight. A fight. N no, she cannot force him and demand things of him that he does not want to do. She has to accept the fact that he has his reasons for not wanting to get married. And she has to just accept it without screaming, without in yelling. In actuality, huh? he has never told her why. This is what the discussion has to be about. Yeah. <coughs> you can't enter into a discussion because it ends, uh, ends up in a fight. Yeah, because there are, so self the, there are selfish demanding people that are unable to negotiate in a normal fashion. Mm. You know, it's, it should be two adults where they, they each lay their cards on the table mm. and they either come to a compromise or uh, or one goes with the other, or they just separate, and he just pays child support. Hmm. That's all. You know, it's, it is what it is. I bet you he's the kind of guy that if, if, if it came to that, he'd still want to make booty calls. I don't know him. <laughs> I, I mean, it's possible. Yeah. <coughs> House it's, Republican leaders. It's possible rallied on Tuesday around one of their own whip Steve Scalise. Okay. After he said he regrets speaking to a white supremacist organization 12 years ago and condemns the views of such groups. That's true. He, he, uh, he made it hard for his party, which I'm very happy of. <laughs> Yeah, but now he changed his mind, you see, when it interferes with him getting ahead. Of course. See? You know, yeah. he's a politician, isn't he? Yeah. The supportive statement suggested uh. that party leaders think the flare-up will fade during the holidays with a new Congress set to convene next week. Several Democrats criticized the Louisiana lawmaker but did not call for his resignation. Oh, he's a Louisiana Republican. Well, where do you think he wants to, you know, be speaking to white supremacists, Ku Klux Klan, David Duke, and etc. The, these are people Louisiana. that... These are folks that are still fighting the Civil War. Oh, yeah. Scalise said that as a state legislator in 2002, he spoke to many groups about a major tax issue. One of the many groups that I spoke to regarding this critical legislation was a group whose views I wholeheartedly condemn. It was a mistake, I regret. And I emphatically oppose 
the divisive racial religious views groups like these hold. Republican leaders defended Scalise within minutes. House Speaker John Boehner said Scalise made an error in judgment. And he was right to acknowledge it was wrong and inappropriate. Now what, what makes them think that he won't make uh, some more uh, errors in judgment? Uh, when he becomes the, 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 the new whip of the, of the new Congress. Well, he must have been... Is that the only mistake he made in his whole life? I mean, it, it must reflect how he really feels, otherwise... Oh, at that time it did, yes. Otherwise he wouldn't have said and it. And still it does, but they have to cover it over, can't they? Uh, any, I mean, must they? Anybody could apologize and said they made a mistake. That, does, that doesn't mean it changes how they feel. He's, if he's a racist, he's a racist. That's correct. But they hide it well, do they not? Because I, I was watching today on uh, one of the Fox uh, programs uh, where Wayne uh, Rogers is always on and, uh, you know, the actor, Wayne Rogers. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the mon mon moderator or whatever the hell he is of the program was saying that the Democrats always bring up the racist card. They always play it. And that damn they, Sharpton. They do? That Al Sharpton. You know? Oh, so, so, so uh, blacks in America cannot defend themselves? No. Then you're being a racist. They can't have an opinion. They can't defend their lives. They're, they can't de defend... They, they can't uh, uh, desire a better life. Like anybody well, they can else. desire a better life all they want, but they ain't going to get it. So, that, so what they do is they, uh, they, they stand up for themselves, and then and they just call Sharpton a racist uh, uh, for wa or playing the race card just for wanting the best. Well, you see for what his they're doing. People. You see what they're doing with Ferguson and and, and yeah. the uh, the uh, Staten Island uh, Garner. Garner, Eric Garner, yeah. If you protest against those things, that's racism. You hate the cops. Well, this, yeah, that, and the, the government thing. calls the protesting a low-grade terrorist. That's great, yes. Even peaceful protesting? So, oh, so they could be sitting right down there. Hey, spray them faces with the, with the cayenne, baby. So you a, a lemming, a drone, and a... a, a a yes boy, you know, you just have to be victimized and and, and accept it. Yeah, I saw I, I saw somebody say the other day that uh, hey, well people should uh, should learn how to deal with cops. When a cop tells you something, even if it's wrong, you do it. That's the kind of mentality we have out there. No, you don't do it. If some Nazi stormtrooper comes up to you and he tells you what to do. It ain't the law. You have no yeah. right to listen to him. Or if he wants to... Uh, You're his boss! Or if he wants to search every orifice of your car and your person and he has no warrant and he has no um, well, legitimate I, uh, 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 um, some, motive, motive for some, doing so. Some vote was taken the other day which supposedly did away with our Fourth Amendment rights. Yes, I heard about that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not up on it. And what, what about the law to allow local law enforcement to spy on us? That's been around since, you know, the NADAA. Yeah. No, no, no. We have to learn something in this country about a law is not always a law. We have laws in this country that were put into effect to punish people, to hurt people, like Jim Crow laws, so that they could lynch blacks, and etc. You don't obey those laws! You know? So just because something is a law, right now it's a law to what? To not criticize Monsanto? 
and, it, and it's it's against the law in some some red states just to be homeless or to yeah. try to to go rummage to a garbage can yeah. or a dumpster for food or something you know or to feed the homeless so just because the elites got certain laws passed don't mean we have to obey them oh yeah the right wing they're real Christians if you're a, 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 a minister in Florida and you feed the homeless you get arrested oh and they're supposed to be Christians they're phonies they total, use God as front man, that's it, total, total, total phonies. Uh, they want to undo everything that happened during the civil rights uh, sh struggle. They want to undo everything. Everything that happened in the 1930s with the uh, FDR. Yeah, they want the New to, Deal. to enslave the mainstream and make the United States and then the world a corporate oligarch and eventually the oligarch will turn into a plutocracy because even among fat cats there's always some fat cats that are greedy and selfish and they want to be the fattest cat of all so the oligarchy would most likely turn into a plutocracy and uh, all this all the evil that goes with it will be the law of the land and then Mankind will destroy itself because it'll be profit over the planet and people, and that's that. So, and the only thing you'll have to hope for is the second coming of Christ. That's the only thing that you would have left to hope for if you're a nice, average folk. Well, a lot of nice, average folks are going to die before Jesus comes. They can't the even great tribulation. They can't. They can't. The day of the Lord. They can't even uh, motivate themselves to to vote. To vote. So, okay. So, 2016 comes along, and they say people only vote for the real big elections. Yes. So the they'll, they'll they'll make it their business to get their ass out there. 2016. They'll get to the polls, and guess what? Even if another Democrat or even if a liberal independent gets elected let's say let's say Bernie Sanders uh, gets really lucky lucky as a leprechaun mm -hmm. and we have a Bernie Sanders Jesse Ventura in the White House they still have to deal with the Republican House and Senate and and, and Supreme Court because but you you uh, idiot assholes allowed the Republicans to get control of the House, the Senate. And the idiot assholes are going to allow them to get control of the White House in 2016. If they... Well, you're a very... Sometimes you can be very, be very gloom and doom and negative. Because that's what is ahead. Now, There's what, nothing but gloom and doom ahead. Then... <coughs> then, then uh, then, then, then the poor, the poor folk, the po folk, might as well kiss their ass and just die, because that's exactly what is going to be left if Republicans get total control of Washington and the world is going to hate us even more. And there, or there will be, and there will be World War Three. Three. Yeah, these are already prophesied. All of them. Because. Well, the, you know, hey, uh, uh, war is big business, so they'll they'll start uh, World War Three. The pollute well, the World Earth. World War Three is going to be a nuclear war. So yeah, so Jesus Christ Himself, Matthew twenty four, uh, has to come and intervene, or there will be no flesh left alive. Uh, what you're saying is, it will fulfill Bible prophecy. The end times will be fulfilled if if. if Republicans get total control and because you won't be shocked because it we are waiting for a certain series of events ah. to take place uh, someone told me um, uh, a very active very proactive member of holistic health talk um, uh, told me um, uh, Helen Johnson uh, told me that uh, that people throughout eight throughout the ages, even in uh, 
hundreds of years ago in ancient times after Christ um, there have been many that said there we are living in the end times because life always had struggles and crisis and horrible things always happen throughout but, the history of mankind but there were no signs. No, during the Napoleon. When you start following the signs yeah. of the prophecies that will happen, right? then you can claim the Great Tribulation, right. the Day of the Lord, yeah. and the End Time. What I mean... But just because there are bad times yeah. means nothing. I mean, since the Bible was, was created, there have been many leaders that were looked at as the Antichrist or the Beast. Yeah, that, but that doesn't fulfill the signs. But what you're you're saying, a certain series of signs that's must take great. place. That's now, stop me if I'm wrong, but I believe right now we are experiencing the white horse of the apocalypse. We've been experiencing that for a long time. False prophet, the false thousand church. Thousand years. Okay. So the white false, horse has been riding religion. for false centuries, yeah. Yeah. and today, more so than ever. Well, yeah, because it's it prophesied to have a falling away, a gigantic falling away of now, all religion, now, and a, and a a a a a a uh, a. Uh, Returning to the Roman Catholic Church of the Protestant faiths. Right now, I, I, returning to Mama. Now, what right. about what about this thought? Throughout history, uh, there's one thing that's happening today that did not take place since the Bible was created, and that is. Now, the family structure is deteriorating. You don't have that, you know, close-knit family that stood together like they did for, for centuries, you know, with like uh, producing your own food, family-owned farms. Uh -huh. See, now the family structure has been broken apart. Uh -huh. You know, you have all these single parent households uh -huh. and People are not saving their marriages. They're not sticking it out. Uh -huh. And uh, it, this, this seems to be very few total, complete family structure. We have a mommy and daddy and children mm -hmm. all together, living together. Uh -huh. and, and it just seems to be uh, 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 without natural affection, like 2 Timothy, a very cold nature of society. Everybody thing. going their own way. That's right. It me, everything is, it's a get way of life yeah. with people. Me, me, me. Whereas in the past, the, the neighborhood, the, the, the uh, local society, the neighborhood, and the family, they all stu stu stood together and worked as a team to survive. Because they Well, of course, that was a time. That was a time when we owned land. The real wealth. Right, and our our de our very dependence on survival was not on on working for the man. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't dependent on working for some employer, some yeah. asshole employer. Like the Industrial Revolution took people away from the family farms, uh -huh. they moved to the city, and then they were totally reliant on the man. Yeah. You know, but... What freedom and liberty. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I think this was the beginning of the end, gradually, of the, of the family structure. You know, you have people with their careers, uh, not producing their own food and 
and uh, well, according to the right wingers, that's the feminists who did that. The feminists did that. Okay. They're always going to blame the, the progressives. They ah. blame the feminists for the families breaking up yeah. because they blame the lesbians for the families Ooh. breaking up. But but in reality. Uh, there most likely were always gays and lesbians. It's just that they were in the closet. It's not that it's not that there everything is becoming gay. You know. Uh -huh. Well, it just means that they're they're not. Uh, it's not a taboo to publicly display their gayness. Yeah, as far as I know, they've always been somewhere around one twentieth of the population. Yeah, it's just it's just they now. don't grow exponentially. Or whatever. Yeah, it's just now they're not in the closet anymore, and yeah. uh, you know the Republicans, being paranoid as they are, think that uh, uh, you know uh, straight people are being converted into uh, homosexuality. Yeah, well, they, 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 they think gay. in terms of that you have a choice. Either to be uh, uh, homosexual or heterosexual. Most cases, you're born. Depending on who you want to date on Saturday night. With the inclination, in most cases, most cases you're born. I'm not talking about the uh, the woman who wants to dabble and claim she's bisexual. You know, the very effeminate, very uh, pretty young female who thinks it's in vogue to be. Uh, Bisexual. I'm, I'm talking about the ones that were gay since, right. since they, they, uh, since childhood, yeah. and uh, they were always around. But you know, uh, Republicans are very paranoid uh, about many things. But but uh, their mind is is not um, the storage. Uh, uh, Space for facts. They don't yeah. have facts. Not according to Michelle Bachman. Rolling around their mind. Who no. always presented facts. Really? To anybody she was arguing with. Really? Is yes. that so? Especially those damn Republicans, dead Democrats. Not, you know? not unproven ideology or no, idiotic no. statements. Of, but she claims she had facts. That's correct. Well, where are the facts to prove she had the facts? She said them. Who cares? That's factual enough. She said them, and the media gives her the face time and pays attention to what she has to say. Because she has a title. The she media, has a title. The media sh should be saying, well, prove it that you have nothing but facts. Uh, Miss Bachman. Well, they wouldn't Mrs. have to Bachman. prove it. All they have to do is pull out a couple of videos. <laughs> but they're not challenging these. Exactly. Videos. Nobody's challenging these nuts. Because, as Chuck Todd said, if we do that, we won't have any guests. They won't come on the show. They won't come on the show again. I guess that's why David Letterman was making nice, nice with Chris Christie. And Mr. he'll never come back. Mr. Hair thingy. Donald Trump. Trumpy. If, that, if, if anybody says, you know, Donald, I know you're full of shit. Donald won't come back. And, and uh, Donald will try revenge. Oh, who cares? Like, you know, people people uh, have to grow a spine like uh, against the the fat cats like the Koch brothers. Or uh, people have to grow a spine. Period. You know, Pe some people have grown spines. You know what they are? They're dead. Well, they're they're wussies. They don't want to fight. They don't no, want to fight for what's right. They fight. They put out some truth, and now they're dead. This is what you so what do you, got, what do you got to world? do? You got you got to be a a, a a a a pussy and shaking your boots at the Koch brothers before. Yeah, before you seek the change that you want, 
you better make sure that your back is covered. Okay. Well, if you're if you're on the side of truth, how can one go wrong if they're on the side of truth? When you get shot in the head, and they say that you committed suicide. Then you That's got, how you gotta have people. You gotta have. You gotta have. What was that woman who worked you? for uh, the uh, plutonium place, and they put plutonium on her lunch or whatever? Oh yeah, I remember uh, that. What the hell was her name? Forget it. Yeah, or, or, this the, is what happened. or the witnesses of the Roswell, New Mexico crash. Yeah, this when, is what happened. When the government says you you uh, you better keep quiet about this or else. Of course, well, you you know how many. Let him in. You well, know how well, many. We're, we're we're done anyway. You know how many like uh, you know j journalists and newspaper men and, and et cetera, You know our dad. They committed suicide. Uh, a car accident, the you brakes mean, went out. You mean, you mean you know? journalists that investigated uh, big, big scandals? Yes, that's the ones. Well, then, and then, then we need a revolution, and we need we oh, need a revolution. Who's going to come for the revolution? See, William Eisenman, he's a very intelligent, brilliant man, but he's not like what you would call. You know, because he like, understands. Fucking fight, man. Hey, you know, like because he understands. I'm no I, look. I'm progressive, but I am no pacifist, brother. Well, I who are you no, gonna fight, though? You gotta grow a fucking pair of balls and fight the forces of evil, brother. Yeah, and I just said then, when, when they come against you and shoot you in the head and call it suicide. Yeah. What about what about a militia with AK-47s <laughs> trained to, to revolt? Where are they? I don't know. They, well, they, there you go. They gotta, they gotta come together. They gotta form. They got. <laughs> when people get that pissed off, they'll form militias. I can bet against that. You don't. You, you, you don't want. I win. You don't want any civil war. You don't want nothing. I'm a cynic. What do you want to do? I understand. Just be a victim. I've been fighting for over thirty years. Just be a victim. With the newsletter. What do I have to? show for just be a fucking victim for us the goddamn life what do i have to that, show is that for what you want to do no fight what do i have to show see, for it liberals are pacifists and they're pussies this is why i am a progressive I, i'm a real a realistic progressive i'm not a pacifist you know a lot of liberals want to be like hippies flower children like barney the dinosaur oh, that's me. i love you and you love me that's me right but up 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 that's me right I don't know. That, well, why do you say that then? I'm talking about. You're talking about nothing. You don't understand what you're talking about. Traditional you don't understand liberalism. How dangerous it is out there. I'll give you a little truth. This is a siphon. Si there's no trickle down. That's the truth. You, 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 if you go on national TV, somebody should go on MSNBC and say there was, there is no trickle down economics this is your real truth siphon up to the 20 percent one percent but i haven't seen anybody I, I i mean they beat around the bush about it but they don't mention nobody mentions names and why nobody calls out and why the nobody says the Koch brothers paid off the republican congress nobody says anything and why in, in the mainstream media because they don't have a goddamn spine because that's who makes their money. You must not mess with the camera. Yeah, I know. I know. I hit the. That's I, where they get their money from. Nobody's going to speak against their boss. No. In a materialistic world. What about? Well, you're dependent. You just said before you're dependent on the right. Man. But but if, but if you if you let the American people know by being a whistleblower and all of a sudden the whole country knows the real truth and then they fire you the uh, the station fires you guess what you're well known because you told you let the american people know everything they have guess the facts what? what you're out in the street you're out in the street at the moment because of what you did of doing the right thing you mean 
That's correct. But you're out in the street at the moment, but life goes on. Ah, uh, yeah, but you ain't got no income coming in. At the time, you don't have any income, but you, but you, you're doing. What your, do you do in a materialistic world you do without it, income? You're doing your job as a journalist. What about doing the right thing f a a a that you uh, made a promise to when you became a journalist? What about doing the right thing for the people and for God? Again, I just said it. Of course you're going to get persecuted. Yeah, but you got to be persecuted only to the extent it doesn't interfere with your income. Because yeah, once your income is interfered with, you got nothing. You got nothing to build on. You got no one behind you. Tell me anybody who cares about them. What about dignity? Poor goddamn homeless people what, on the street. What about dignity and, and, and doing the right thing as a, as, as a human being? Doing the right thing and having your dignity. Everything's got to be dollars and cents for, for the older generation. Everything's got to be dollars and cents. And my my aunt this. and uncle... Right, you know, hey. you know, I, I, I tell them, my aunts and uncles, I tell them, uh, 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 oh yeah, well, I'm, we're, we're on internet talk radio. Hey, how much does it pay? Uh, hey, James, you don't say, hey, James, long time no see. Hey, James, you working? You working? You working? That's all they know. Do re me. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the bread and butter. Is, you know, the point of it is. What about the? There has to be. On income. Everything's about income, income, income. What about doing the right thing in life? You can't produce a newsletter without income. Well, that's true. Well, oh, well, that's true. I'm not talking about so I'm that. Not pointing I'm, up. I'm saying, I'm saying, uh, providing the facts people and not and not uh, a folding like a cheap camera to the ideology of if the work, rich fat cats if you work for NBC you're not going to do it accept this well, well I, as I, a fact of life well I do know that they will fire these people no kidding uh, but, you know, firing is not the end of the world. You know how many people were it fired? It is when you're blacklisted. You mean when the when the mainstream media says, no, uh, do not bother to apply here? That's correct. You need not apply. You need not apply. We know your history. Because the mainstream is controlled by the corporate sponsors. Until the system is changed. And it is no longer governed by the fat cats. Nothing can be done but a little thumb in the dike here and there. Well, here guess there what? To prevent the big old deluge. Rachel Maddow publicly announced the letter she received from the Koch brothers, and she also publicly announced that she said no to the Koch brothers. And Rachel Maddow was still employed at MSNBC. And the Koch brothers still got what they wanted during the last election. Well, yeah. Uh, so, bingo, ergo, you know, whatever. Oh, speaking of the last election, you haven't noticed that nobody challenged the fact that maybe uh, many of the states were rigged to, right. to win Republican? Many of the states were rigged. Voter tampering and voter, yeah. But, you know, it's like having a law. And the law is wrong. Yeah. And you don't have the money to take it to the next court or take it to the Supreme Court. What happens? Nothing. Yeah, like Florida with the homeless. Justice has a price. You can't feed the homeless. You can't feed them. You're you're a pastor, and you have compassion. You can't feed the homeless. If you're homeless, you're, it's illegal to be homeless. There's no jobs out there. But then again, you get arrested for vagrants because you're out in the street. But you don't have the money to pay rent. So it all amounts to who's in power. Right. As 
long as those people who stay in power, nothing will change. And Americans keep on electing those same evil bit, people. A little bit of cement on the Horta now and then, that's it. That's all you can do. Right. A little bit of cement. It's like uh, people who talk the, the truth about what's in the Bible. Like, uh, let's say, David C. Pack or the late Herbert W. Armstrong. They're, they're, they, were, they were giving facts, but they always had a tiny flock. They know. Therefore, we are tiny destined, flock. unfortunately, to have a tiny flock. Tiny flock. All right. We'll see you next time, people. So long, tiny flock. Anything's possible on Uncensored Hard Hitting Troop. It totally ad libbed and unplanned and unrehearsed. But until you people and uncensored get involved, nothing can be done of any importance. No, the people have to get involved. You have to grow a spine and you have to vote. You have to get involved. You can't be like those idiots out there that just watch sports and reality shows and. Uh, and, and nonsense like that, and a uh, uh, music industry uh, fanatics. You got to get involved in society and government, and you got to care. You can't just, you know, be apathetic about it, you know, and and want to partay right. like my couple guys I know, you know. But anyway, we'll see. You. This has been a Mega Life Twenty One production.